Hi, how are you? I hope you're doing well. My name is Danielle and I wanted to design some anime figures, so I did that. Uh, we're going to be looking at some characters from the game Genshin Impact, which is a very popular game. I'm sure you've heard about it, especially if you clicked on this video and if you've been on my channel before. <laughs> Uh, but just in case you haven't, it is an open world fantasy gotcha game. I personally really enjoy it, as you can imagine. Uh, <laughs> and I really do recommend that you check it out as well. Uh, this video isn't sponsored or anything like that, I just really like the game. But anyways, we're going to be looking at three of my favorite characters and four concepts in total. So. Two of these concepts were actually done for a different video of mine, but it was just a much larger video. I didn't actually get to talk about the concepts and I do feel like they got a little buried in the video. So I really wanted to give them like their proper due diligence, but uh, the other two concepts were done specifically for this video. And if you don't know already, I'll let you guys guess which ones were done for which. But <laughs> with all of that said, we can just get right into it. Okay, so the first character we're going to look at today is Venti. I love Venti, of course. <laughs> He's my second favorite character in the game and my second best character, second best built character on my team. I was lucky enough to get him. And I, I have to say, I feel like I'm cheating sometimes, like, especially when it comes to things like daily commissions, any kind of crowd control, getting anything in the air or needing to get up anywhere. He has made my life so much easier. Really, I love using him. I would describe him as a little shit with a hard gold and I love him for that. Uh, and yeah, just great character all in all. And <laughs> basically, oh, fun fact, because I did get, I did uh, become a fan of all the voice actors as well. I just, I really loved their performances and then I went and I searched them up and found out more about them and went down the rabbit hole of Genshin VA streams. Anyways, fun fact, the voice actor of uh, Venti, Erica Harlicker, is also the voice actor of Karapika, another favorite character of mine. So that's actually very exciting. <laughs> uh, that's, I'm gonna stop fangirling now. Um, what I will say is uh, her, she does stream, I'll link that in the description as well as her Twitter and I'll do that for the other voice actors as well that we're talking about in this video, because very much when I'm complimenting the characters, I'm also very much complimenting the voice actors uh, performances because I really just love how they brought them to life and blah, blah. You know what? We're going to shut up with the fangirling now. Anyways, getting on to the character itself, the point of this video. <laughs> so I knew I wanted to approach this as if I was making a Kotobukiya figure. They have made a couple Genshin figures currently uh, and they have a pretty straightforward formula when they do them. So they take the basic character illustrations and then they add those onto these grassy bases, which in my opinion is reminiscent of Mondstadt, which makes sense for the characters that they've done so far with the travelers. Like Mondstadt's the first area you come into when you're in the game. So it makes sense with the travelers, uh, especially as they're, you know, Knights of Favonius and all that. Uh, and then also Barbara is from Mondstadt as well. So I think in, I don't actually know if this is true. I just think that's the case. Uh, but it works as well with Venti, who is from Mondstadt, so. <laughs> um, and I just think the overall style of Kotobukiya's figure is very like bright, happy, fun, works really well with Venti's character design as well. So I knew I wanted to go down that route. And so when it comes to the inspirations, of course, uh, the first inspiration was A, the Kotobukiya figures, particularly Barbara's, because I knew I wanted to do something similar with the elemental effects going around him. Uh, then the second inspiration was also uh, his basic character illustration, of course. <laughs> uh, then the third was his actually his wish illustration. So for those of you who don't know, the way that you get new characters in the game of Genshin is you uh, make wishes on banners and some characters have limited time banners like Venti. So I was, I'm really happy that I was able to get him. Uh, and I hope he comes back soon so I can start getting maybe some more constellations from him. But anyways, uh, <laughs> so what was I saying? Oh yeah, um, that's how you make the wishes. And then when you get the characters, they have their illustrations and this is Venti's wish illustration. And so I knew I wanted to take inspiration from that. Uh, and then the last thing that I wanted to take inspiration was, uh, from was his elemental abilities. So he's an Anemo user. He uses air, wind, and all the likes of that. Uh, he particularly likes to create uh, pockets of air that swirl around, either bringing a bunch of enemies into a singular area or 
swirling them into the air or swirling himself into the air and all of the likes of that. So I knew I wanted to take inspiration from that and incorporate it in the figure. And so these were my four main inspirations. And this is how the figure turned out. So of course you can see we have the basic character pose as well as the grassy base. However, in this case, I had the grass kind of going all in one direction to emphasize the effect I was going for with the air swirling around him, uh, you know, not only does that bring in his elemental abilities, but it also kind of makes sense for the character illustration itself. Like he's about to go and swirl up into the air like his character, you know, I think it all makes sense. <laughs> okay. Uh, anyways, uh, so I did have it uh, all going one direction. And I think the only thing I would change about this base is maybe I'd add some flowers and like a rock or something like that to make it more in line with the other uh, bases that they've done. But otherwise I think it works pretty well. Uh, and for the effects themselves, we have these like wind effects and those were taken of course from his wish illustration. So yeah, that was, this was, this was how the first, the, how Venti's character concept turned out. And I think it's cool. I, I would buy it. I, I mean, I'm a bit biased, but I think it could work <laughs> and I and I think it still um fits within what Kotobuki is already doing although I would they do the I don't know we'll see <laughs> not we'll see <laughs> I'm not actually creating any figures for a company I don't know I don't know if I should I'm just gonna make that clear here this is just me enjoying myself literally <laughs> very much a passion project that this is but anyways uh we can get to the next character and the next one that we're gonna work on is Zhongli. I'm really happy I got to include Zhongli in this. Uh, unfortunately, I didn't include all of my favorite characters. Uh, unfortunately, both Yoimiya and Tainari are not in this video, which it hurts. It feels like a crime, but maybe one day, maybe one day I'll design some figures for them. I do have a couple ideas for Yoimiya specifically too, but um, anyways, <laughs> I did get to include Zhongli, which is really nice. And he is, He's strongly, man. She, <laughs> just like the perfect mix of like, of, of character design, character writing. Of course, Keith Silverstein like brought this character like, oh my God, you know, you know, all of this stuff. <laughs> I quite, I quite enjoy when I, I get to see him. I loved his story and I, I just, I just get to get I don't even know what to say. Um, and the thing is like, I've thought about this. I've been prepping this video for so long. So you think I would just like figure it out, but I'm in front of the camera now. And I'm like, uh, I don't know, with Zhongli, like how can you not love him, you know? So, <laughs> but anyways, uh, when it came to his uh, character, his uh, design, his figure, I, uh, I approached this as if I was designing an Apex figure. They also have done some uh, Genshin Impact figures currently, and they there are definitely more variety within them, but I specifically took inspiration from Zhao's and Ganyu's, mainly because I have Zhao's and Ganyu's pre-ordered. <laughs> so uh, it makes sense that that's what I would take the most inspiration from. Uh, and they also were doing something similar, at least for those two, where they took the basic character illustration and then they created a complementary base to it. However, in these cases, obviously you can see rather than having a uh, continuous theme, the bases are much more personalized to the character themselves with Ganyu having a cloud base, which I think is so cute, very excited for this. I think she'll be my first Genshin character to come in too. Um, and then Zhao is of course with his like very elemental ability based base. And I specifically took a lot of inspiration from Zhao's because I knew I wanted to do something elemental ability based for Zhongli. Okay, just jumping in to say that I also ended up going with Apex, not just because I wanted to do a particular type of base, but also because I actually thought that the style of their figures would best suit Zhongli. Uh, it's just a little bit of a softer style of a figure, it's a little more down to earth and coloring and stuff like that. And I thought it would help bring out Zhongli's effortless elegance. So I was also taking that into consideration when planning this, but that's all. Okay, bye. I mean, not bye, well back to, okay. Speaking of which, <laughs> Getting into the actual inspirations for the figure that I created himself. Of course, we have Zhao's Apex figure. Um, I definitely wanted to do something very similar to that. Uh, we have his basic character illustration, which worked perfectly because I think it 
fits kind of what I had in my mind and why fix what's not broken, you know? Uh, and then uh, we also have his wish illustration. So I wanted to take some aspects from that. And lastly, we have his elemental abilities. So Zhongli is a geo user, he uses earth. <laughs> And he has these pillars that he brings up from the ground. And I don't have Zhongli in the game. I think I actually missed out on him. I had just missed out on him, I think, when I started playing, which is too bad, but I definitely want to get him one day. Uh, and then me doing this illustration is so much more difficult because I didn't have like, I had to find references on the internet rather than just being able to like open the game and turn the character around and like use their abilities and go, oh, cool, that worked, okay. Anyways, <laughs> yes. Anyways, so he has these pillars that um, come up from the ground and I think they add geo damage or something like that. And then he, he can also create shields and destroy people, you know? And so I really wanted to incorporate those as well. And here we have the four main inspirations and the final concept. So I'm really happy with how this one turned out. I really tried to emphasize how there would be different materials and finishes on the illustration itself when it came to like the figure. Things like I wanted to make sure that his shoes were extra glossy, that the metallics were extra metallic-y to show like that would be emphasized on the physical figure itself. The, the weapon with how there would be a more clear material on some of the other parts. You know, I really, I hope I was able to kind of emphasize all of the different details that they would be able to add through different finishes and stuff like that through the figure itself. Um, and then of course we have the base. So um, as you can see, I took the basic groundwork from the Wish illustration. I feel like I'm talking very fast. Oh no, it's okay. Um, <laughs> we have the basic groundwork from the Wish illustration. And I just, yeah, kind of took that, put it over. And then we have his beams coming out. Uh, we have three of them coming, kind of coming out all around him. Um, I, maybe the composition of this would have to be changed as well, uh, either to make it better balanced or just um, to consider it in a more 3D lens. But in general, this is kind of like what I was going for. And uh, I think it, I think it worked out pretty well. Now this is very, <laughs> this is very uh, inspired by my own personal preferences with figures. Of course, I'm sure you could do a beautiful like e stream figure where you have the pillars at like their actual scaled size, you know, next to Zhongli with like a bunch of them around him or something like that. And I don't know, maybe I'll design that one day too. I don't fucking know, but like. <laughs> Uh, personally, myself, I just like smaller bases. I like things to be a little bit more compact. I don't like them to take up too much space. As you can see, I have quite a bit of details. And so I like to have multiple different figures per detail. So all of these figures are very uh, biased in how I created them. But I do feel like I did get a pretty good, um, a pretty good size for these pillars. Like they're not too small, but they're also not too big either. I still think that they have the impact that they need to have. Um, but that was, a, that was another thing I was definitely taking into consideration when drawing this out. And yeah, I, I think it, I think it turned out well. I'm pretty happy with them. I am. And that's Chung Lee. And we can move on to the last character now, which is going to take, it's gonna take a while because not only is this actually my favorite character in the game, um, but I main this character and we have two illustrations and tell me, I'm, I feel like it's gonna take a while to get through, the, especially the second illustration. So strap in. Um, <laughs> so the third character that we're looking at is Chong Yoon. I love Chong Yoon. Like I'm talking, a huge part of the enjoyment for the game for me is building up Chong Yoon. Like uh, just trying to get him to be as strong as like, I want to be, I want him to be terrifying. I just want him to be like literally the peak. I, I, I want him to make it so that he literally cannot get any stronger. It's just so fun for me to just have this huge giant goal and just like slowly but surely work towards that. Like, my Chan Yoon's pretty good right now. I would say he's 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 holding his own, especially at, I'm what, AR 52, I just reached. Um, and he's holding his own. He's just, he's, a pretty, he's doing pretty well. And I, and I have a temporary artifact set on him. I don't even have the proper, the proper artifacts at the moment. So I'm, I'm feeling good about it. Um, but yeah, it's, 
I really do. I really do love playing with him and doing stuff around that. And in general, I think Genshin's just a really fun game where you can do whatever you want with it. Like, sure, there's more efficient meta stuff that you can follow, and I'm sure it's a lot of fun for people to do that. And but you don't need to. You can just use whatever character you. You can just use whatever character you want. <laughs> You can just use whatever character you want and like in whatever team that you want and you can play however you want And I just love that freedom in the game. So it's really fun. It's relaxing. I'm like destroying enemies and I'm just like, oh, this is so calming, you know <laughs> Oh my god, I haven't even gotten into the character design yet. Um <laughs> Very quickly, of course, I'm a fan of his uh, voice actor Bo Bridgeland and he even started streaming recently, which is really cool. That'll be linked in the description. Um, he streams on YouTube, which is perfect because I prefer YouTube streaming, um, mainly because now I have to switch over to Twitch, mobile, whatever. Um, but anyways, so that's really cool. And I got too excited talking about this. Okay, <laughs> then I'm like losing, <laughs> I'm losing my thought process. Um, Okay, we'll just we'll, we'll get talking about the character. Or not the character. We'll get talking about the first the first figure, the scale figure that I designed. So I did this similarly to Venti, where I took the Kotobukiya formula and I applied that to Chong Yun. However, unlike Venti and the other characters that make sense make sense to have a more Mondstadt type of base, I can I really don't know if it's actually supposed to be that. I'm just interpreting it that way, but. I wanted to make sure that Chong Yun's base was reminiscent of Liyue, which is the area that he's from. It's the second area that you go to in the game. And also my favorite area. Like, don't get me wrong, I do, I like I like the other areas. Uh, I'd say Mondstadt's a very comfortable area. Uh, Inazuma's kind of fucking annoying, but I like, it's pretty. Uh, Sumeru is it's so much fun to, <laughs> to, to explore. But to me, like Liwa is like home. It's a fu it's fucking home for me. I still do my commissions there, my daily commissions there. I just, I, okay, anyways. Um, I wanted it to be reminiscent of that. Um, particularly I was taking inspiration from uh, the, 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 the lighter grass that tends to be there, especially on Mount Hulao which has a higher concentration of core lapis, which is a very important essential material for Chong Yun. And my Chong Yun is level 90, so I've spent quite a bit of time at Mount Hulao. <laughs> uh, and I just think it's a really pretty area too. So, you know, I really wanted to take heavy, as heavy inspiration from there as I could. Uh, and then another inspiration that I took from Chong Yun, the character itself, obviously there's the basic of Kotobukiya, Chang Yun basic character thing. Liwa and 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 now the last inspiration that I took for this <laughs> the last inspiration I took for this was um through his uh, elemental abilities himself. So Chang Yun is a Cryro user. He uses ice. Particularly he has a very um area focused ice ability. Uh, so either his like ultimate ability puts a, a, a bunch of swords and icy swords into a very small area, or his main ability, uh, which is so fun to use, is um, uh, he like slams the sword onto the ground and then it, and then the area around infuses with cryo and then you tag and yeah, 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 yeah. Um, And so I really wanted to take uh, inspiration from this very icy area based type abilities. And so here's how and oh, here's, here's the inspirations all together, of course. And here's how the figure turned out. So we've got basic character pose. Again, another character I think works really well within the Kotobukiya style. Um, and then with the base itself, we do have the grassy base. However, this time we have the more yellow grass to be rep uh, representative of the yellow grass in Liwa. I think that's how you say it. And yeah, I also added a little rock. Originally I was considering making a kind of mountainy type of thing because it's a very mountainy, rocky area, but it really ruined the composition of the, the figure itself. And so I decided to just go with a rock to be reminiscent of that. Um, in general, this base needs to be either a bit bigger, a bit longer, or it needs to be adjusted on where he's standing like that. The composition is off already, but way better than when I tried to do the rocky, <laughs> the, the, the mountainy base, but um, and then of course, the last thing that we got to look at is the ice around his foot. So uh, I have the ice holding him up. I thought that would be a really fun way for like it to kind of disguise the typical 
stepping thing that they step on, you know? <laughs> well, also simultaneously having like the immediate area around him be frozen. But I thought it was like a fun way to bring in the, the ice cryo element and elemental like area based type thing. So that's what I was going for with that. And I, I think this one worked out well because I do think in my personal, very biased opinion, that it still fits pretty well within the rest of the Kotobukiya figures that they've come out with, the, 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 the other foundation that they set, while simultaneously being much more reminiscent of his area. And, but it's still, I think it's still, okay. And now we can get to the last concept. And the thing was when I started um, doing this video and looking at different inspirations and all that kind of stuff, I was also shopping for Genshin merch on Ami Ami. <laughs> Cause of course I was. And uh, I just happened to find these Chara birthday good sets, which have shikishi boards, a button and some kind of birthday good. And basically, they have a lot of beautiful illustrations. I personally got Childs and also Chong Yoon's. And speaking of Chong Yoon's, I absolutely fell in love with it, particularly the little snowman. I just thought it was so cute. And sure, I could design some scale figure based on it. Maybe I will one day, but more than anything, I looked at that and I thought like, that would just be such a cute Nendroid accessory. And then, and, then I, and then I started thinking like, okay, well, if that's the accessory, what would his faceplate be? And then I was thinking, okay, what would his other faceplates be? What would, it, what would his other accessories be? And, and before I knew it, I was planning out a Chong Yun Nendroid. So that's the bonus. <laughs> now I tried to approach this as if it was a generous modern day good smile company Genshin Nendroid. They have created a couple so far. So that gave me a little bit of framework, things like, uh, even though they've done some more articulated Nendroids for more combat type things with the Genshin ones, they are still the uh, replaceable parts instead of articulation. Uh, also they tend to have kind of just two main accessories and three face plates. So I could like kind of take that and take my own liberties with it because <laughs> I wanted, there was a guy that I, I had four accessory ideas. And so I went with those. So this is why it's a generous modern day good smile company. It still fits within what they're already doing with them, but it's definitely, I, I allowed myself to have a little bit of fun with it. <laughs> but I did literally try to plan it with like thinking about, okay, how many arms would I need? How many legs would I need? Uh, you know, how many hands would I need? Like I was planning literally all of that, which I got a little too into that. But anyways, getting into the accessories themselves, the first one that we have to look at is his talisman. So Chong Yoon is a, a exorcist that's very good at his job, but not in the way that he wants. It's a very cute gimmick. And of course I had to include one of his talismans, especially so he can do that like pose where he's like, I don't know, he like puts it, it's like, it's like, a, it's like an idol animation. So I thought you, you could do that. Um, and then of course we have his popsicles so he can get a little unruly, I guess. And so he uses popsicles to calm down, another really cute thing. Um, and so of course we had to include a little popsicle for him to hold. Um, I was worried about including both of these because I was like, oh no, we're going to need two different hands to hold these things. And we're already, uh, this is what I mean. Like when I was thinking like even just how many parts I would need to use the accessories that I was already being generous on. And then we get to the third, <laughs> we get to the third accessory. Of course it's the snowman. Uh, in this case, again, I was thinking like, okay, well, what kind of hand would I need to hold them? I already need two different hands for the other two accessories. And then I already know I'm going to have a straight arm and a bent arm and a straight leg and a bent a leg. So am I going to need another type of arm or would it work within that? And then I just decided to save myself the overthinking and make it so that the little snowman, which I already know wouldn't be included in this anyway. So I don't know why I'm thinking about this so hard. Um, but basically I decided I wanted the little snowman to just be like an accessory that you can have around the neck. Android, uh, you know, just like a little mascot that you can put no matter what pose or whatever you want to have with him. It's just like there. So I did flatten out the bottom a little bit to show that it's a, it's a floor thing now. And this way you can be a little bit bigger too. You know, you don't have to worry about the sizing as compared to how the Nendroid is going to be. You can just put it there. So yeah. <laughs> and then of course we needed to figure out his weapon. So 
I, I was stuck on this for a little while there because with the other weapons that they had chosen for their nunchucks that they made, they, they went with uh, not the not the starter weapons, but like a, a kind of basic weapon that works with an android, but also isn't like too out there, you know. And so I was like, okay, so what what claymore could I use for Chong Yoon? I feel like the sacrificial great sword is what you'd want to go for, but I don't really want to do the sacrificial great sword. Like I'm a Chong Yoon main, I'm a Chong Yoon main DPS, you know. I that doesn't add extra damage. So is there another one that adds extra damage that I can do that Good Small Company would realistically do or possibly do or works with his character design and blah 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 blah. And I was overthinking it, and then I had this thought, and I was like, okay. I'm not actually creating an android for Chong Yoon. <laughs> Good small company doesn't actually need to realistically use this weapon. I've already taken liberties at this point. Like, why am I trying to stay within the, the, the framework when I clearly already know what weapon I would want to include with him, which is the wolf's gravestone. <laughs> So this is a really great weapon for him, especially as like a DPS specific weapon. I personally, I was really lucky. I was able to get it off of the, um, or maybe that's unlucky to some people, but to me it was really lucky that I was able to get it off of the uh, standard banner, um, just through like the typical wishes that you get through in game. And I love it on him. Not only does it really help with the DPS type stuff, but also I just really like the way it looks with him. Like I love, that Chong Yoon has this very cutesy, light, white and blue character design. And then you juxtapose that to this like jagged, dark red and black, like Claymore sword, whatever. And I uh, just, I think I, it's fun to look in game. I would like the way it looks with him. And so of course I wanted to go with that. And so I did. And you know, the one that I drew is already pretty simplified. I'm sure in Android form, it would need to be simplified even more. What I can suggest Good Small Company, if you were out there, what you should do, especially if you're gonna continue making the Genshin characters, is you should make specific packs with different types of weapons in the game. So you can go with a more standard weapon for whatever character you're creating, but then people can buy extra packs similar to how you do the extra like faceplates. And then in those packs, you have some more like out there weapons like the wolf's gravestone or another one. I don't know, the only one that came to my head is the dragon's bang. So I was thinking of Zhongling and that's what's on, what's on her right now for me, so. But you know what I'm saying? I think that's a good idea. I think you can, do, and you don't even have to deal with Genshin. You can deal with any other one where there's like multiple different types of weapons. Add extra accessories packs for specific series, especially popular series. Okay. <laughs> I'm trying to move on from that thought process. But so those were the accessories that I went with. And then of course, when we have the Nendroid itself, I tried to plan it as if I was planning an actual Nendroid, thinking about what joints there would be and all of that kind of stuff. So this is what we have. Of course, you can see things like the separation from what would be the front part of his hair that you would take out. So you can change the base plate to uh, the arms and like the different things that you would switch. So you know where it's going to be bent and the hands and all of that kind of stuff. So yeah. Anyway, so for the base, <laughs> for the base, for the, for, the for, for, for his standard face, I decided to go with something that was um, calm, neutral, but happy. I wanted to, I wanted him to be like, like he's just chilling, you know, that's a, like, I, I wanted to be very reminiscent of just his chilling face in, in game. And so that's what I kind of went with with this one. But then for the second face plate, I wanted to go with something that was a bit more serious, you know, battle ready. Maybe you can interpret it as like angry, who knows? Uh, and so with that one, I decided to, um, change the faceplate, obviously. Okay, so we have the second faceplate here. I also included the sword on this version because is it not so cute? I love the juxtaposition. I love how that sword looks with him. I love it in game and I'm happy with how it looks on this Nundroid. But yeah, so that was that. And then for the fir third, <laughs> for the third Nundroid, I wanted to take heavy inspiration from his idol animation where he has a popsicle and he goes, I don't think I could do it. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Come up for your job, Bo. <laughs> that never happened. Okay. 
I wanted to take inspiration from that one. Uh, and so for the third one, I wanted to make it like a little more silly and goofy. Uh, and I ended up going with an expression where he's got like his eyes closed, a bit of a, like a happier smile and some blushing. And then I tried to draw like him holding the popsicle, but, but the, by this point I was fucking done with this illustration. And so a little bit of a weak arm, but we're not going to talk about it. We're not going to talk about it. Um, but I, you get, you get where I, you get what I was going with, right? And we have all three of them uh, together, and I think it's cute. I think it actually, I think it, I think it looks like an android. <laughs> and it's really fun to draw. I will never draw an android again, though. Never ever. That was so fucking tedious. It was so rewarding, and I'm so happy I did it. And Chung Yoon deserves every bit of tediousness I, I I did on this, but I will never do it again. <laughs> Those were my concepts. I don't really have. This was so much fun. This was genuinely so much fun. Like. I, I, this was so fun. My next one that I'm going to be doing is going to be a high cue themed one. Very excited for that. Um, and if you want to see the behind the scenes on that, cause now that this video is out, I can actually talk about what's on the Patreon. Um, if you want to get any kind of like progress updates on, you know, where I'm at with these and what's going on and any kind of other backstage stuff that's related, uh, you can check those out on my Patreon as well as with some speed paint videos with chill music or extra commentary and answered questions uh, if you want to help me decide like things like i have the first two characters picked out for the next video but i need help deciding the third one so i'm gonna when this video goes live i'm gonna set up a uh, suggestion thing so that you guys can help me pick out what the third character will be uh, so if you want to help me out and stuff like that that's also there yeah uh, and big special thank you to my, my patrons right now. It was so fun getting to like talk about this with you guys. Uh, thank you so genuinely much. And an extra special thank you to Tram and Gregory Fraser. Thank you so very much. And I, my brain's not working anymore. I got so excited about filming this and I, and I feel like I've gotten that excitement now when my brain's like, and you're done. <laughs>